Is there anything more enjoyable than sitting out in the sun and feeling the warmth of the rays on your skin? It doesn't matter if you're hanging out at the neighborhood park or lounging on an exotic beach. The sun can brighten your mood just as easily as it darkens your skin. Unfortunately, those same enjoyable rays are also capable of doing tremendous harm. Skin cancer is the most common form of cancer in the United States, and melanoma is the most common form of skin cancer. It's also the most dangerous. Melanoma can be lethal, but it is curable if caught early. Melanomas can occur in fair-skinned people, but can also uh, occur in people of many different ethnicities and in any age group, and can occur in regions of the skin that don't necessarily see the sun. What you look for is a mole that looks irregular, asymmetric, has different colors, or specifically moles that change or evolve. So we educate patients that they themselves are their best line of defense against these things and to look out for things that change on their skin. And also images are key, so we do advise patients to look at as many pictures as possible. Melanomas have what's considered a precancerous phase called a dysplastic nevus. It presents as unusual moles that resemble melanoma, even though they are benign. Patients with dysplastic nevi should be vigilant about monitoring their skin. There is some controversy as to whether all melanomas arise from dysplastic nevi or whether there are melanomas that arise what's called de novo, which means just completely out of normal skin. People who have certain types of high-risk moles, such as moles on the scalp, moles on the hands or feet, and moles that occur in sun-protected areas should be checked out to make sure they don't have what's called dysplastic nevus syndrome, which can be a genetic condition where their risk of developing melanoma is greatly increased above the normal population. There are many different treatment options for melanoma. Most of them involve surgical management because it's vital that the roots of melanoma are excised during treatment. For melanomas, the standard treatment is what's called a wide local excision with or without a lymph node biopsy and or lymph node dissection depending on the stage uh, or degree to which it has invaded underneath the surface of the skin. Typically, that procedure is performed in the office, usually under local anesthetic, where a margin of what's considered healthy tissue is excised around what is perceived to be the roots or edges of the skin cancer. That specimen is then sent to a lab. The pathologist will section through the block of tissue to make sure that the edges are clean and the surgical defect is then repaired with sutures. Patients with any history of skin cancer should follow up with their dermatologist at least every six months for what's called a complete body skin examination. We also strongly encourage patients to do self-examinations at home so they're comfortable with the spots and moles on their skin. A patient is in the best position to notice a change and to notice it early. Melanomas can be and probably are more dangerous than any other type of skin cancers. The reason why is that the cells that make up a melanoma called malignant melanocytes have a um, tendency or an ability to invade inside a blood vessel or inside a lymphatic vessel and travel throughout the body. They do have this high risk of metastasis and the risk of, me of metastatic disease increases the deeper these cells root underneath the existing tumor. So the prognosis a patient has depends solely on the depth of the primary melanoma at the time of diagnosis, which is why it is crucially important for patients to present to their doctor early on in the process so that these things can be caught before they develop roots underneath the surface of the skin, which is why the vast majority of melanomas are treatable these days with proper detection and therapy. Cure rates of melanomas are getting better, although the incidence is increasing, but I think that patient education, educating the population, educating doctors and pathologists uh, are helping to increase survival rates. You should always protect your skin as much as possible, which means wearing sunscreen, preferably a sunscreen that has a broad spectrum of protection against ultraviolet rays. You should also wear protective clothing, a protective hat that provides shade, and seek shade during the peak sun hours between approximately 10 a.m. and 2 or 3 p.m. You can still enjoy the warm rays of the sun, just with a little more caution than before. I'm Dr. Mike Rosen, and you're watching the eHealth Network. Stay healthy.